All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a quick guide on how you can make almost any tank in Blender. First, go to Google Images and look for blueprints of the tank that you want to create. Now, you want to find the blueprint where you can see the tank from all different angles. Then load that up into your favorite image editing software and invert the colors. This is going to make the blueprint a little bit more visible in Blender. Open up Blender, go to Side View, add a new reference. Then just make the image a little bit more transparent. Now align the image from side view with the axis and push the image to the background. Duplicate the image, rotate it by 90 degrees and do the same thing in the front view and repeat one more time for top view. Now I like to turn on cavity shading when I'm modeling because it makes things a little bit more fun. And then just load up a bunch of random images of the tank from all different angles from Google. Load it up into your favorite image editing software and save that as a new image. Now split the screen in two in Blender. Open up an image editor in one of the screens and load up the references that you just saved. And now you can look at these as you're modeling. Now use a default cube to shape the hull from top view, then do it from side view, and then do it from front view. Then add a couple of loop cuts and use some basic extrusion or move some edges around to shape the rest of the hull. Now add a plane to the side of the hull and scale it down. Make sure this is a separate object and make sure its origin is in the middle of the hull. Now add a mirror modifier. And now any action you do on one side is going to be duplicated onto the other side. Now move the edges a little bit to shape the side armor correctly. And then in side view, extrude the edges to shape the rest of the side armor. You're probably going to have to bevel some edges in the front or the back to get the round mud guards. Select the edge loop on the side of the side armor and fill that in. And if you add a loop cut to the bottom edge, you're going to get a new vertex. And you can use that to shape the side armor in side view. Do that as many times as you have to to shape the rest of the side armor. Now this tank has a bevel on its side armor, so we're going to create that. And then we're going to connect some of the vertices better just to get some better topology. Now we're going to add smooth shading to this object. Then we're going to add an edge split modifier. We're going to uncheck edge angle. And this way only edges that we mark as sharps are going to be shaded sharply. So select an edge loop, press Ctrl E and mark sharp. Now add a solidify modifier to add some thickness to this object. And check even thickness in the modifier and then just mark the rest of the sharps on the object. Now this tank has an edge on the inside of its side armor, so we're gonna extrude that from an edge loop by selecting the face loop, extruding it, right clicking and pressing Alt S, and then pushing it outwards a little bit. And we're gonna use some more simple extrusion to create this edge at the front of the mud guard, and we're gonna join everything together on the side armor. Now use another plane in side view to shape the rest of the side armor, and this particular tank has some kind of hatch on the side armor, so we're gonna use a circle, bring it to the side and shape that hatch. We're going to scale the circle, extrude it, add a bevel to its edge, and then we're going to add a cube to hold the circle in place. And we're going to add one more cube, and this is going to be the first hinge of this hatch. And then we're going to create a small hexagon, extrude that out, and it's going to be the bolt. We're going to duplicate that a couple of times, and then we're going to duplicate all three bolts and the rest of the shape downwards to copy this object. Copy a couple of faces from the top of the side armor and extrude them upwards just to create these bars that you can see on the sides of this tank. And then we're going to duplicate that shape as many times as we have to. Now most tanks have some kind of machine gun in the front, so we're going to extrude a face here and create the base for that machine gun. Insert a face to create the hole for the machine gun. And then duplicate the plane, scale it down to create the base of the machine gun. And use a small circle to create the machine gun barrel. And then we're going to add a plane on top of the hull just to shape some of these hatches in the front. We're going to extrude that, insert some faces, extrude it again, and then with individual origins, we're going to duplicate the planes on top and use them to shape some very simple viewports. Then we're going to add a circle and use that to create this other shape in the front, and then use another circle to create this other viewport in the front. Now you can duplicate this viewport and bring it to the other side of the tank. Let's go back to the side of the tank and create this exhaust system here. We're going to use a plane, extrude it out, and then extrude a face in the top, insert a face, and extrude it inwards. And then we're going to duplicate a face from the side and separate that to a new object. And we're going to add an array modifier to that. And this is how we're going to shape the grills on this exhaust. And then we're going to add one more shape using a cube here just to make it a little bit more detailed. We're going to add a cube at the top of the hull. We're going to scale that outwards. And we're going to use that to create this bar in the back of the tank. Then we're going to create another plane, bring it to the back, extrude it upwards, and insert a face. And then we're going to use the same technique we just used a minute ago to create some more grills here. We're going to duplicate a face from the back of the tank, scale it down, and use that to shape one of the boxes at the back of the tank. Extrude that outwards, and then duplicate it to the side, and shape a few more boxes like that. And then you can just use loop cuts and extrusion to create some more detail on these boxes. Now add a plane on top of the hull, and in top view, use that to shape the turret. Then extrude this face upwards, and in side view, align it with the blueprint as well. Now some tanks have turrets which are more round in shape, 
So you might have to use a cube with subdivision surface modifier to get that rounder shape. Now duplicate a face from the back, reshape it a little bit just to create a box at the back of the turret, and then add a few more planes and shape a few more simple boxes at the back just to make it a little bit more detailed. Now at the top of the turret, you're gonna wanna add a circle and then use that circle to create the commander hatch. Extrude that circle, bevel it a little bit, and use a plane to shape the other thing on top of it. Now add some more cubes to create the hinges. And at this point, it's up to you how far you want to go into detail. And at the front of this tank, we're going to insert a face, extrude it inwards, and this is going to be where the main gun is going to be placed. Then add a cube for the base of the main gun, bevel its edges. We're going to add a circle and then use that circle in side view to extrude it to the front and shape the gun. Then extrude the end of the gun a couple more times to shape the tip of this gun. And most old tanks like this one have a hole through the end of the gun. So we're going to insert a couple of faces and delete them. And we're going to connect the two holes and we're going to move around some of the edges to make the holes a little bit more circular. There's another machine gun next to the main gun in this tank. So we're going to do the same thing as we did before, create a small machine gun there. And now you can duplicate some of the shapes that you already created and place them on other parts of this tank, such as the top of this commander hatch. We're going to do the same with these viewports we created in the front earlier. We're going to duplicate those and bring them to the top of the turret. Now duplicate the shape, bring it to the other side or wherever else you have to place it. And then create a few more of the objects you can see around the turret, such as this antenna in the back using a circle. Now at this point, you want to stop and make sure everything is parented or connected correctly. We're going to take an edge from the bottom of the hull, separate that to a new object, and we're going to use that edge to shape this object that holds the wheels together. We're going to add a couple of loop cuts and extrude a few more edges there. And then on this shape, we're going to manually move the vertices around because it's a pretty tricky shape to create otherwise. Now extrude this shape and add a circle there. This circle is going to hold the wheel. Duplicate the shape to the other side and add some smooth shading, add an edge split modifier and mark the sharps. And then we're going to use half of the circle. We're going to extrude one edge and we're going to rotate it to the side. And this is going to be the suspension for the wheel. We're going to push that backwards, extrude the wheel and extrude the suspension. And then play with some more extrusion and scaling just to get the rest of the shape. With a wheel. Then we're going to connect the wheel to the other object. We're going to duplicate the wheel to the other side of the object. Then we're going to duplicate that whole thing as many times as we have to. And we're going to copy the wheel one more time and modify this object that we created to hold that wheel. And then we're going to duplicate that whole thing to the front. Now you're going to have to create another wheel for the sprocket. So extrude a circle and play with some more extrusion to shape the rest of the wheel. And we're going to add another object on the inside of the mud guard here just to hold this wheel in place. And we're going to duplicate the wheel to the back and scale it down a little bit. And we're going to create a plane underneath one of the wheels. And we're going to use this plane to shape the track. And extrude this face downwards and create some more detail on the track. Again, it's up to you how far into detail you want to go. Add some smooth shading and add an edge split modifier. Then add a path curve to the bottom of one of the wheels. Scale it down and then extrude the individual vertices of the path and wrap them all the way around the wheels. Now, once you bring it back to the place where you started, fill in the two vertices to connect the loop. Then bring the track a little bit closer to the curve and make sure that the origin of the track is in the same place as the origin of the curve. Then add another array modifier to the track and add a curve modifier to the track. Now set the curve object to the curve that we just created. And you might have to play with some of the settings in the curve modifier to make sure it aligns correctly. Now we're going to increase the number in the array modifier to connect all the tracks. And we're also going to adjust the distance between the individual tracks so they connect correctly in the end. Now at this point, we're going to move the hull upwards. We're going to select all the wheels and tracks. We're going to duplicate them. We're going to place a 3D cursor in the middle of the world. And then we're going to set the 3D cursor as the pivot point. Then we're going to scale everything to minus one on the x-axis so that it's copied to the other side. And then in edit mode, correct all the normals with shift N. Then bring the hull back down. And I like to play with some workbench render settings just to create a simple render for a tank like this. Let me know in the comments if you want to see another tutorial for how to do this. Now you can download this model as well as any other model that you see on my channel on my Patreon page. So be sure to check that out. And that's more or less the workflow for pretty much any tank in the world.